What's going on YouTube? My name is Jim and today we're unboxing the DJI Spark. Now we will be carrying all DJI products from here on out at dollarhobbies.com. A lot of guys have been asking, hey, do you guys sell drones? Can we get drones? Yes, you now can get drones at dollarhobbies.com. We will be carrying all the future drones that have not been announced yet, as well as the drones that are currently out there, as well as the accessories for these drones. So today we're focusing on the Spark. We're going to do the unboxing of this. Now this one is green in color. Now DJI does not put anything else on their boxes except the white drones it's just kind of how they market them but there is different colors out there there's green yellow red blue and of course the white version but today we're going to unbox this we're going to see what's inside we're going to do a quick overview of the drone and then i'm going to show you some of the camera menus in there as well and then we're going to also go through the menu system of the actual DJI app. So the first thing we get is we get the case and then we also get this accessory box right here on the side. Now it does come with a wall charger. This is the original Spark. This is not the Fly More package. We also have user guides and manuals in there. So you do not get a controller with this version. You only get the drone and then you will have to use a cell phone to fly it. We also have this paper that's wrapping the case. It has some information on both sides. And then we do have the carrying case as well, which the drone is housed in. Now this is a very nice case. It's very lightweight, it's a foam. It has a hinge on the back, but it definitely looks fantastic. Keep this to transport your drone back and forth. It's so tiny. I can't even show you guys on camera. If you guys can see the size of the drone compared to my hands, it's fantastic. Now inside the case, we do have extra propellers in here or extra blades. I usually call them blades, but yeah, some people get upset about that. But we do have two extras. I wish they gave us four, but they give us two. Now the case itself can hold three batteries as well as four blades. One in the drone, two on the sides. And then the drone itself does come with some shipping stickers on there so we do have some protective stickers both on the front uh sensor and we also have one on the camera here just to keep everything nice and clean in shipping but you guys have to make sure you remove those because we want our obstacle avoidance to work correctly we want our camera to work correctly and then on the back of the drone where the battery is we basically have a warning where the on off is so read that as well now the battery does pop out Mine, unfortunately, is dead right out of the box. So make sure before you guys do anything, you charge this battery up. And I will show you that in just a second here. But the battery does weigh quite a bit. The drone actually doesn't weigh that much. Now, underneath the drone, once we remove the battery, there is a QR code as well as some other important information. But there is a Wi-Fi SSID and the Wi-Fi password that is already pre-programmed in this drone. You guys will need that to connect the drone to your actual phone. Now, I'm gonna skip all of that setup in this video, but it's very simple. You just need to follow the on-screen instructions on how to do that. And then that QR code and SSID code is also on the front of that carrying case. And then in the future, you guys can definitely set your own Wi-Fi, uh, SSID, and password. So the number one thing I get is for the blades is how do we remove these? Now, these are quick release. You basically push down and turn and they pop off. It's very nice. As you guys can see, it is spring loaded on this motor. And then we do have these two plastic pieces on the side. So essentially, we're just going to line these up with the open slots. We're going to push down and then we're going to give it a twist and that will lock in the actual blades to the drone. Now, the camera on here, it is a two axis gimbal camera so it's obviously integrated we do have pitch and roll right here now I do want to say the camera is 12 megapixels so you can get 12 megapixel JPEG photos you can also do 1080p at 30p or 1080p at 30 FPS I should say um, out of this camera which is fantastic now a lot of people you probably read online are mad that it's not 4k this drone is really meant for personal use that's why it has a lot of gesture controls it's so tiny you can kind of just take it anywhere it's more for just your personal 
use kind of more of a hobby type drone you would definitely not use this as a professional commercial drone but you can still get some fantastic shots now the sensor above the camera and gimbal there that is the obstacle avoidance now we also do have that below the drone as well as the visioning positioning system camera and then we do have the battery in the back where we do have these four gold plates on there and that is built for the quick accessory recharger so how we recharge this drone is the spark logo pops up and we do have a usb cord right there as well as the micro sd card where all your video footage will get recorded now the battery again it is the heaviest part of the drone this is what makes the drone heavy we do have the quick release on the side so there's these two hinges you just push the battery pops out very simple very clean now all dji product batteries are proprietary to the drone so you can't really swap them in and out and then we do have the power button on the back this is what actually powers the drone so you basically just press once and then you press and hold and that will start the actual drone up of course you can do this while it's not hooked up to the drone because the drone doesn't have the power the battery is what you are powering on and then that will give power to the actual drone so you guys are probably going to want to get a second or third battery because they are rated for 15 minutes of flight time only if you guys want to fly longer you'll want that now i've already powered the drone on this is actually the second time i'm doing it i've already gone through the process of linking it to my actual device and i've downloaded the app and i've done the firmware upgrade the questionnaire so at the time of this recording things could actually change on how they do stuff so again download the app connect it to the drone also follow the on-screen instructions make sure you guys do that firmware upgrade and then take the 10 question survey and then also follow your state laws and federal laws and faa laws be safe when you guys fly but definitely you guys can have a lot of fun as long as you guys fly accordingly to the regulations that are out there so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just connect the drone we will be using the Wi-Fi SSID and the password that was given to us that's actually on the drone itself so we don't forget it in the future. And now we're just going to look at the settings of the camera. Now I'm a huge fan of photography. I've been doing this for over a decade. I've been doing videography, wedding videography for over a decade. So I'm going to actually link my channel below and I can teach you guys a little bit more about photography in that channel. And then we can gear this channel obviously more towards dollar hobbies, the hobby of RC, drones, things like that. So. We do have a 12 megapixel camera. We have two settings. We have auto mode and manual mode. We have an ISO from 100 to 1600. And then we do have our shutter speed right here. So we're taking 12 megapixel JPEGs or we're shooting in MP4 1080p at 30 frames a second. That's all we can do on this camera. There's no log profiles anything like that now when you guys are flying never set your shutter below 1 1 60th of a second because if anything moves in that frame it will have a slight blur to it because this is a drone i always suggest you guys shoot at 1 100th of a second or faster now we do have different sh uh, shooting modes here we have a single shot multiple AEB we also have a timer and then we do have this new mode called shallow focus where we will get a nice depth of field on our subject and the drone does this automatically inside and then we do have panorama mode and they actually included a stitching device inside or they included some stitching software inside this application we can do the new sphere mode which makes everything kind of look like a world a 180 degree horizontal a vertical and then the overall huge panorama mode so very nice shooting modes that we have there now going into the actual settings of the camera we can add some extra things the first thing is the histogram now this is a light meter the left of the meter is dark the right of the meter is light as you guys can see we have a scale so if i put my hand in front of this it should shift to the left because it's going to be a very dark image here we go so it shifts to the left when i pull my hand away it's much brighter it shifts to the right you guys will use this meter to get a perfect exposure of your actual image so you guys can see what it actually looks like we also do have an osd 
So this is a menu that's kind of hidden underneath. It kind of just tells you what you're shooting, like if you're shooting JPEG, if you're shooting video, you can just keep that on. We have auto white balance, sunny, cloudy, incandescent, fluorescent, and then custom. Now you guys can set these to whatever you want. It just depends on how your image actually looks. Now, in custom, if we set it to 5600 Kelvin and it is a nice sunny day out, that is what actual light outside is. It's 5600 Kelvin. Now, I pause the video here for a second because I want to let you guys know, if you're going to shoot a panoramic or a video, keep your drone off of auto white balance because what it's going to do is it's going to change the white balance throughout the video or the shots that you are taking. We don't want that to happen because the video or the, the panorama will look really weird. It will be cool on one side and then really warm on the other side. So it's much easier to set a custom white balance, keep it at that for everything, and then in post-production, we can go back and we can change the color simply. We also have guides, so if you guys do follow the rules of photography, you can set the rule of third for your composition, and then we can format our SD card as well. We can also reset our camera settings, so if you guys need to reset them to the default, you can definitely do that. But again, we don't have any raw or anything like that. Now, the aspect ratio we are shooting in for photos is four by three. Again, these are JPEGs, they're 12 megapixels. Now we flipped over to video mode over on the right side here. We have now switched to an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. This is video. It also does a slight crop on the sensor. Now I'm not sure how much of a crop it does. I'll have to go back and look that up. We basically have all the same things that we had before, our ISO, our shutter speed, and then we can set grids, histograms. I do want to let you guys know if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, which this camera is shooting, you always want your shutter speed to be 1 60th of a second or higher. You want to double your actual frame rate with your shutter. So 60 or higher, you should be good. Never drop below that or the image is going to start looking like it's ticking or it's going to be blurry if you're taking photos. So now that we're done with the camera part of that, we're going to just look at the overall application itself. And keep in mind, this changes constantly with updates and firmware updates, things like that. So right now we have an aircraft status. This is basically like our, our pre-flight checklist. It will tell us what mode it's currently in. If we need to uh, calibrate the compass, it will tell us our IMU settings our vision control, our battery, uh, heat and temperature. So that's just kind of a pre-check. You guys can check that at any time by tapping the top of this screen in your application. Now going to the main controller settings, there's a lot of things we can do in the application. We can set a remote identification so you guys can actually, if you've registered your drone with the FAA, you guys can put that FAA ID in here. You guys can also put important information such as your email, phone number. If you lose the drone, somebody could potentially hook this up to your computer, grab all that information and give it back to you. We also have some basic settings. The home point setting, you can set where the drone has taken off or you can set where you are currently at as the home point. And if the drone loses signal or needs to return for, to home for some reason, it will return to you. Now we can also enable a dynamic home point. So this will be moving. Now, I don't believe this works in gesture mode. It may work. I, I've seen videos saying it does and it doesn't. And then we also have the return to home setting here. And I just want to show you guys or use an example of a football field. So let's just say I fly out a hundred yards and at the 50 yard line, there is a tree that's a hundred feet tall, but I'm flying 10 feet off the ground. If I put the return to home at current altitude, it would fly at 10 feet off the ground right into those trees. So I shut this off and what I use is return to home altitude. This is set at 30 meters out of the box. So what it will do is if it goes to that hundred yards, it will go up 30 meters in the sky, avoid pretty much everything, and then drop down those 30 meters back to its home point. We also have beginner mode. So if you guys are new, you can flick this in beginner mode. I believe this is default right out of the box. 
it beginner mode is turned on i've turned it off and then we have our maximum flight altitude and our maximum distance and then we do have a sensors option right here at the bottom so we're going to click in there this will tell us all our sensors such as our imu our compass our gyroscope this will tell us if everything is working if it's good to go now i do have a lot of magnetic interference for my compass although it says it's pretty good to go i do want to let you guys know roads and in sidewalks are built with metal rods in them so do not calibrate your compass on those go to like the ground a nice flat surface where there's not a lot of metal interference when you guys are calibrating your compass now we do have obstacle avoidance on this drone it's in the front of the drone we also do have the enable vision control at the bottom of the drone so it will tell us how high off the ground we actually are now we can enable backward flying. So essentially if there's something or an object or a person that gets in the way, the drone will avoid them by going backwards. But keep in mind, this drone does not have a sensor in the back of it. So essentially if I'm in front of the drone and I start pushing it towards the back, it could potentially hit whatever is behind it because there's no sensor there. Now, I do wanna let you know, we do have gesture controls with this drone. So you guys can actually fly this with just using your hands. Obviously you still have to have the app, but you guys can use your hands and it will fly around. You guys can take a selfie, you can record. You have to learn the gestures and it takes a little bit for the drone to kind of react to those gestures that you're doing. But although it is a very cool option, it's kind of gimmicky in my opinion, but that's what they are working on and it gets better every time they do a firmware update. Now we do have our Wi-Fi settings. As you guys can see, there's a lot of interference in my area. There's not really any channels available here, so I wouldn't fly around my house, but we do have our Wi-Fi username and password. You guys can reset those in that menu to whatever you want. And then we also have our virtual joystick mode. Also, if you guys did get the fly more package or you guys do have a remote, you can use this to set that up as well. So you guys can set these to whatever you want the sticks to be on your screen. Um, now the default mode is mode two. Most of you guys will probably just stick to this mode. This is kind of just normal knowledge. Everybody knows that when you go forward, it goes forward, you go backwards, it goes backwards, left is left, right is right. We have aircraft battery information here. This will tell us what our voltage is as we fly. It will also give us a low battery warning indication. So again, about 15 minutes of flight time on this actual drone. So you guys will want to set a warning. You don't want your drone to obviously die. We want to know when it's going to be at 30% and then it should fly back to us or we know to start flying back. We also can adjust some gimbal settings here. So we got FPV, this is first person view or first person perspective. Um, and basically when you tilt the drone, it will move. Now when you switch to follow mode, this will use the pitch in roll. So right now I'm actually moving the drone, but you guys don't see anything happening because it is using the gimbal to follow and make the footage very nice and smooth. Now. When you guys take off, your gimbal's not always 100% horizontal. So what I do is I take off and I look at the horizon and the horizon should always be flat. So what you can do is you can do minor increment adjustments to your roll and pitch and make that horizon flat. You can do this while flying and you guys will get a nice thing. Now in general settings, we wanna set our unit of measurement to miles per hour because we live in the US. We also have select a live broadcast platform so you guys can stream right to Facebook or stream right to YouTube. We also have a map setting. Now this is for China mainland. So do not turn this on unless you live in China. It will confuse your drone because things are different in China than they are in the US and other countries. Now we also do have some video stuff that we can do. We can cache some you know, stuff in the background. And then we do have our device name so you guys can name your drone. So that's pretty much the application in a nutshell. It's very simple, very easy to use. Right now we have virtual uh, touch on our screen so we can actually slide our finger and tell the drone what direction to go in. We also can tap with our two fingers and we can get rid of all this extra information on the screen. Now the sensor is only capturing what the drone is seeing. It's not gonna capture all this other information that we see as pilots on the actual footage. So just be aware of that if you did not know that. 
And then we do have our virtual thumbsticks right here, which I'm toggling on and off. And we can also tilt our camera up and down so we can get different shots here. I highly recommend you guys go out and buy the remote control for this. You'll get more range. It also just kind of is nicer to have physical buttons. And then we do have a bunch of different modes here what you need to already have be well you need to take off and you already need to be flying to get to these modes but we do have some cool modes that can track people a tripod mode kind of a lot of cool stuff but you do have to enable some other features in the drone so again overall this has been a quick unboxing and review we can slide to take off and end this video. If you guys have any more comments or questions, leave them below. I will link my personal YouTube channel below if you guys want to know more about the photography side of the actual drones and how to set up things and how to get smooth shots. And I'll be showing a lot of footage there. But again, if you guys have any questions, dollarhobbies.com. If you guys want to know more information about this drone, such as specifics, DJI's website has all that information too. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good one. Peace.